Brian, what are the five categories of passive investing? Yeah, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about because it kind of encapsulates the investment world into five categories that I've broken it down into. Now, there's different ways of investing. This is talking about financial investments and passive uh, investing. And I'm not talking about other ways you can invest because you can invest in yourself, your self-improvement, college education, you can invest your time in other resources. This is about financial resources into something that doesn't involve your active management. Uh, so we'll start with that. Now the five areas, uh, the biggest one in the world is the bond market. That's one of the areas. The next one is equities, uh, stock market. The, the third and, and all the variations of that you might throw crypto into there and structured notes into bonds and you know there's there's always variations but we got bonds uh, the equities market real estate insurance company products which includes annuities and life insurance and finally cash and cash equivalents so Brian let's go back to bonds what are some of the reasons that you would not want to invest in bonds and some reasons that you might want to do it yeah, historically bonds have done well. If you look at any chart for the last 40 years, you'd say, oh, this is a pretty good uh, area. It's not very volatile and I can get really good yields and the price has been improving for most of these 40 years. That looks like a really nice chart. The problem is if you chart out the next 40 years, which I can't, uh, we're, we might see the inverse of that because uh, interest rates have been falling for, for most of 40 years. And when it, interest rates are falling, bonds gain value. And interest rates used to be high, and they used to have really high uh, cash flow from bonds. And so, as interest, you know, you're getting a really nice yield. Your bond is going up in value. Life is good. So historically, it looked great. But going forward, you have to ask yourself: if you think interest rates are going up, and the bonds you're buying don't even pay a very good yield, that may be not the best investment going forward. Brian, what are the advantages and disadvantages of equities? Well, equities probably have the highest growth potential. You can buy stocks that do really well. And certainly I remember uh, working uh, as an adult and the Dow was 2,000, 3,000 right in there. And now it's you know, well above that, and, you know, 10 plus times that. And so uh, certainly if I just put money into equities, I'd be doing great. They have the best growth potential and they're liquid. Uh, their negative is they're very volatile. And so if you can't handle that volatility or maybe just with a portion of your portfolio, you don't want to have it volatile, then you wouldn't do uh, equities. Next category is real estate. What are the pros and cons of that? Yeah, real estate, uh, one of the cons is it's generally somewhat illiquid. Now, certainly publicly traded REITs are liquid and some private non-traded REITs after a period of time can be liquid. But generally, uh, you know, if you have a, an eightplex, you don't go, you know, I'd like uh, some money. I think I'll sell one of the units. No, you, you either sell it all or you don't sell it. And so it's, it's illiquid. Uh, the benefits are multiple. One is depreciation deductions can be a, a potential benefit. Uh, you might be able to do tax deferred exchanges and never pay the income tax on the gains. Uh, they can appreciate. Uh, we've all seen real estate appreciate. And finally, real estate it can have very good cash flow if you have the right tenants, you're a good landlord, or you have the proper investments in real estate. And with real estate, we know that there's passive and there's active ownership of real estate. The next one is going to be insurance company products. An example would be annuities. Why would you not want to invest into an annuity and what are the benefits? Yeah, an annuity is not as liquid as some some other assets. Um, you do generally have 10% liquidity a, a year with annuities. Uh, another negative to annuities is they, they may not have the highest growth. You know, if you, if you had a stock portfolio over the last 12 years, uh, stocks have been a great place to be. Prior to that, 2008, annuities were a great place to be because annuities, one of the advantages is most of them have a floor of zero. You don't go backward. You can gain, but you can't go backwards. So they can ratchet up kind of like a, a, you know, a, a, a jack on your car. It can only go up, not down as you, as you crank on it. And so uh, that, that's an advantage of the annuities. Another advantage of annuities is that they can offer a lifetime cash flow. They can offer increasing lifetime cash flow, increasing lifetime cash flow second to die for a married couple. So kind of like a pension attribute there. And so that can be a really uh, important piece of a financial planning. Another insurance company product can be permanent life insurance. And then finally, there's cash and cash equivalents. Cash equivalents would mean money market CDs. Pros and cons there. Yeah, if you need some uh, you know, security net, you should have some cash. 
if you have some expenditures coming up in the future. So I've had people say, hey, I need a, I've got a half million dollars from sale of my house. I'm going to buy another house in a year. Uh, can you invest my money? I'm, I'm like, no. Uh, I don't do short-term investing uh, for one year. You get a cash or cash equivalent because you can't afford to lose any of that money. You need it for a purpose. And another reason why you might have cash and cash equivalents, even though they, you know, the negative is they don't pay much of any interest anymore. You used to have a really good interest 15 years ago, but now it's next to nothing. But if you don't know what to do with your money, don't just be in a hurry to put it into something. Uh, just, just it's okay to have cash until you've made those decisions or whether you need the, the cash for another purpose or whether you're just not ready to make a decision on how to invest. Sometimes the best investment is no investment, so cash and cash equivalent. So that essentially could be just a temporary parking place for your money, cash and cash equivalents. Brian, thanks for telling us more about the five categories of passive investing.